I'm Chan Storland, and this is The Docket, our weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you today by the law offices of Pat Maloney. And as always, joined now by San Antonio Express News courts and crime reporter Elizabeth Zavala. Liz, great to have you here on the show. Talking today about a blue wave. You know, a lot of people thought the national election in November was going to have a blue wave across the country. That didn't really happen, but it did happen in the U.S. House and locally in Bear County's courthouses. There was quite a blue wave of Democrats taking Republican held seats in Bear County. So for the county courthouses, that means there's been some change happening in the last several days. What does it look like in the Bear County Justice Center right now? Yes, Chance. This year in Bear County, in, incumbents were reelected in just 10 of 32 judicial races, and 12 district judges weren't on the ballot this year. So this change that we're talking about, whether or not it's Republicans coming in or Democrats coming in, how often does this type of thing happen? You know, it's some people will say, and, I, and I've run into this a lot in the courthouse, that, you know, oh, you know, it's going to change in four years. You know, it, it changed eight years ago or whatever. But, you know, it, it's, it's really, it, it is, it seems to be typical. Uh, there was a lot of talk around the courthouse about a Democratic sweep. Well, there have been Republican sweeps before, which is why this past race, was so staggering to some. And, and I reached out to one of the most senior judges in Bear County, Sid Harrell, who held the 226th district court bench for 30 years, beginning with an appointment by the governor. But he was reelected seven times in Bear County. And he was appointed to, uh, two years ago now by Governor Greg Abbott to be the presiding judge of the fourth judicial administrative region. And among his duties are assigning visiting judges and handling motions for recusal. And another part of that job is to ad advise local judges on judicial management. So to me, Judge Harrell is an expert in judicial matters in Bear County. And um, I mentioned that he had held the 226th state district court bench for 30 years. Well, he didn't run this year because he had already been, or last year rather, because he had already been pointed to this other spot. So um, the person who ended up getting this this uh, particular bench is Belia Meza, and you know I spoke to her um, shortly after the election and congratulated her and asked her how things were going and. And, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to Judge Harrell was because she said that he had been very gracious to her. He's a Republican. She's a de Democrat. But one of the Judge Harrell is one of the people that it doesn't matter what your political party is. He's, he's just a really nice man. He's very knowledgeable. And Judge Meza even said that uh, Judge Harrell has has told her that he would be available, uh, you know, to act as a mentor or just to ask you know, answer questions. And, and that's something that actually a lot of the judges do in Bear County. You know, Judge Harrell is, is, uh, is sought out as an expert in judicial matters. That's great to hear. Obviously, there would be a good reason to have some more of that across the country, but I guess we can just be happy that type of relationship exists in Bear County. Um, I'm wondering if Judge Harrell gave any insight um, uh, about this wave of change that could happen every four years. Yes, um, he recalled that, you know, like I said, he, he was on the bench here for 30 years. He recalled that Bear County voters didn't always pull the lever, so to speak, and vote straight ticket. And, you know, when I say pull the lever thing, Chance, I'm going to, I'm probably going to date myself here. That saying harks back to those old voting machines when you used to go down a list, flip the switch to your candidate of choice. And then pull the lever, basically, so that all of those votes are cast. I actually remember watching my parents do that when I was a kid. My mom was an election judge here in San Antonio. So but when Judge Harrell said the voters back in the day seemed to make their way down the entire ticket, he said they did their homework. And he said this particular voting cycle, 
he said candidates could have spent millions on their campaigns. But if it's all about the top of the ticket, you'll get a lot of voters who could care less about the bottom of the ticket and the judici- the judicial candidates end up getting lost. Yeah, I mean, that's something that happens in states across the country, though. I know certain states, including Texas, uh, no longer going to have that type of voting. So you can't just say all this one party. You have to go through and and select them. And and I've seen a lot of commentary on how that can affect an election, um, especially when you have someone at the top of the ticket like, you know, Barack Obama or, you know, current President Donald Trump. So there's a lot of talk that we could have just about the voting process itself. Let's switch now to talk about these new judges. I know there are quite a few of them. We can't probably get through all of them on today's episode, but let's talk about maybe some of the, the big names. Sure. Yeah. Um, let me just so that our listeners know the difference. County courts handle misdemeanor cases while state district courts have jurisdiction in felony, criminal, civil, criminal, juvenile, and family law cases. And each of those judges are elected to four-year terms. So I spoke to one of each of those judges, and uh, they were actually still moving in late last week when I spoke to them. Stephanie Boyd, who takes over the 187th State District Court, and Rosie Speedland Gonzalez, who is now going to be the presiding judge over County Court at Law Number 13, which focuses primarily on family violence cases. I had the chance to visit with Judge Boyd in her chambers before Bear County jurors came back this week for jury duty. And Chance, she relayed what I thought was an interesting story when I asked her what's it, what it's going to be like when she observes her first jury selection as a judge. And you know, she used the word surreal because the 187th was the courtroom where she tried her first case as a brand new lawyer in the 1990s. Now it's her bench. And she's been a defense attorney. And prior to the election, She was a first chair prosecutor, so she's been on both sides of the gallery. And now, you know, uh, she she had a really interesting thing to say. Uh, You know, she says, as a defense attorney, your responsibility is to is to watch after is to represent your client. Yeah, it's a small world. That that that's quite a story. Um, and I'm sure there there's some other ones around there as well. But it's really cool that you were able to to find that tale, and we'll see how that career moves forward. Um, but I know you also spoke with a with a county judge as well. Yes, a uh, Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez. Uh, she, I've actually run into her several times. I have an office in the old Bear County Courthouse, which is where the civil cases. Are they have probate, and you've got children's court, and uh, Judge Speedland Gonzalez has practiced family law for years, and many times I've run into her when you know when she's running into court, because I happen to have an office on the uh, children's court, one of the children's court floors. So Judge Speedland Gonzalez is is a uh, going to be practicing, her court is going to be focusing on domestic violence cases, but um, her courtroom also will be a, a little different than the others. Judge Stephen Gonzalez is openly gay, and she has the rainbow flag standing alongside the American and Texas flags near her bench right behind her in front of the Bear County seal. So when I visited with her as she was uh, getting her office together, uh, we were talking about that. And, you know, the rainbow flag, it's a it's the pride symbol recognized by lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer people, you know, all over the world. Basically, you know, you see a rainbow flag, you know, you know, if you're LGBTQ, that's, you know, that's a, a place that is considered, you know, to be to be safe. So she said that the rainbow flag in her courtroom, she placed there because she wants LGBTQ defendants to know that they will be treated just like everybody else does instead of, you know, there, you know, the stigma out there that, um, 
you know, uh, LGBTQ people will not get treated the same. And also she, she wants to bring an understanding to her courtroom, uh, you know, because there's, there's a lot of transgender issues that are going on right now. And, you know, she, she said that it's, it's, it would be good, especially now because San Antonio, and, and I learned this just in speaking to her, she said San Antonio and Bear County has a very large LGBTQ population. So, you know, she said that, that LGBTQ people are not, um, uh, they do, you know, experience domestic issues just like everybody else does. So she feels like that addition in her courtroom is is one of support and one to also show people that they will, that everybody will get a fair shake. And that's obviously something that you would hope would be the case for every judge. I'm wondering, is this something that happens often? Will a judge put something in his or her courtroom that, you know, is noticeable, such uh, as an LGBT flag? Or is this something that is a little bit more special? You know, you raise a very good question. And and, um, I'm really curious to see uh, what, what happens with this, because, you know, I've not seen any other uh, particular displays, you know, before uh, this particular change. But, you know, we have a lot of judges who who are going to be brand new. So it's quite possible that, you know, you might be able to see different things that end up showing up in the courtroom. And, you know, I, I have seen you know, uh, judges, especially on the state district court side, where I spend most of my time in criminal courts, that, you know, the courtroom belongs to the judge. And the judge can, can, you know, have policies that are just theirs. Like I, I recall that we had a situation a couple of years ago during Fiesta where there was one judge who um, would not allow attorneys or uh, prosecutors in his courtroom that were wearing jeans and because um, uh, DA uh, Nico LaHood at the time during Fiesta had allowed his staff to dress casual. But when they walked into um, the 100, it's funny, it's, it was the 187th State District Court, which at the time was, um, was run by uh, Judge Stephen Hilbig uh, Judge Hilbig had very specific rules about his courtroom. He didn't want anybody taking anything to drink inside his courtroom. And he didn't want any of the attorneys who were going to be appearing before his bench wearing jeans. So when I think about those types of things, and I've long heard, you know, in three years of covering courts in Bear County that, you know, the courtroom is belongs to the judge and they can they can, you know, have their own rules and policies. I mean, it seems to me like like Judge Speedland Gonzalez is, is well within her right to do that. But, you know, we'll see because, you know, what some people think is, is, is cool or interesting, others might not. We're talking about the change, the, the sort of blue wave that did happen in Bear County, especially here with judges. Um, and there were rumblings. People were discussing whether the Republican judges who are being replaced – they were kind of at a veteran status and ousted by Democrats with a lesser experience. Have you heard people talking about that? What have you found about this type of discussion? Well, I heard, you know, I heard that from a lot of people in passing after the election, um, you know, because when, when these sorts of things happen, especially, especially in, in a big um, you know, in, in the County you know, where you've got, you know, you've got um, the County clerk, You've got the district clerk, you know, you've got the county judge, and then you have all of these judges. Well, our county judge, a sitting Democrat, was was reelected, but our county clerk and our district clerk were both Republicans. They were ousted. So when all of that happens, I've noticed that, you know, when, when you're elected, you bring your own people in, and when other people are ousted, those folks that came in with them, some of them end up having to leave. They either, you know, leave for, you know, on their own or, 
you know, they could be, you know, replaced by someone who's coming in. So I spoke in length with Judge Harrell about this, and he pretty much dismissed it, Chance. He, he talked about how technology and computers have changed so many things over the past, you know, 30 or more years. Um, he fond, fondly spoke about his resources when he was a new judge, and those resources were two late judges who were beloved Judges Pat Priest and Jim Barlow, who many say mentored hundreds of young lawyers who went on to become judges in Bear County and, and across the state. So nowadays, these new judges have what they call judges school in Austin, where they have to be instructed for about a week or so. And, you know, basically they learn how to be a judge. And they are given a huge manual that's that's called a bench book that has every scenario that could occur in a courtroom in the book. And it, it's funny, I saw it in both of the judges' chambers and in, in the two judges that I that I spoke with last week. So, um, you know, in discussing that with Judge Harrell, you know, I asked him if there was any sort of concern in that particular area. And the big takeaway from him was this, and, and I'll read you his quote. He said, what stays the same is the facts and law that motivate rulings in the cases. Everybody will grow into their job. So, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, anyone who was concerned about, about that, um, you know, might, might listen to what uh, Judge Harl has to say about that and, and just, you know, take that to heart and, and um, you know, we'll see what happens. And a big thank you to San Antonio Express News Court Saint crime reporter Elizabeth Zavala for joining me for today's episode of The Docket, our weekly interview program covering long crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com. Brought to you today by the Law Offices of Pat Maloney. For the San Antonio Express News, I'm Chance Dorland. Thank you.